Hello everyone. So in uh, last uh, last topic, we are uh, discussing about kinematics in one dimension where the an object is constrained in just one dimension meaning ma move lang siya along x that is the motion along a straight line chaka move along y that is the freely falling bodies so <clears throat> for this chapter we will continue with kinematics but this time we are letting the object move in two dimension okay <clears throat> so here are the outline for this topic so i will just put all of the uh, slides in a document because para delete na ta sige og uh, sige og balhin balhin sa ato ang kuan ato ang uh, like document to slides just to to you know to clarify some equation so i will just put it in document because in document it is easier to to write an equation okay so you can just follow your slide uh, presentation sa PDF file. I I will post it in our course site. Okay. So there's the outline for our study today. So we have the position vectors, then we will have the velocity vectors, and then acceleration vectors, and then we will move on to the two-dimensional motion. An example of that is the projectile motion and the uniform circular motion and the non-uniform circular motion okay so what we are going to do here is we just have to extend the definition of position displacement velocity and any kinematic variable to other dimension okay so for first satong kinematics in one dimension we are dealing first with position so what is a position we know that <clears throat> position is like the location of a particle in a specific space, diba? In a specific, like, coordinate system, okay? So, suppose our two-dimensional motion is constrained in the xy plane, as you can see here. So, ito yung path ng particle natin moving in xy plane. So, this is our origin. So, ito yung x, uh, path ng particle. Now, we have to describe the position of this particle at point A to point B. So, what you're going to do is the position vector is from the origin to the point that you are going to calculate first the position of point A. So, meaning that the Ri is a position vector pointing towards the point A. So, remember the position vector is always pointing uh, towards a specific point sa path na to. Okay? So, that is at time, initial time, ti. So, next, after the, uh, we have to find the, again, the position vector at point B. So, that is denoted by RF, meaning the final position. And then, at that final position, I mean, the at that final position vector, uh, the particle travel at time, tf. Okay, so at that point B. So, remember, nga kani ang origin nato is not necessarily nga naagin siya diri, okay? So, this is just like a, uh, like, a kanang, sa pangani eh? Kanang wala siya o kanang, kuan ba? Dili siya kanang definite, meaning uh, you can place anywhere your origin. So, pwede po diri mo origin, pwede diri mo origin, and so on. It doesn't matter, okay? So, basta... A position vector is pointing from the origin of your choice padulong sa imuang position. Position of the particle at that specific point. So, at point A, na siya position vector ng Ri. At point B, later time Tf, na siya position vector ng Rf. Okay? So, take note that the definition of the displacement vector is, <clears throat> is the change in position, di ba? So, the change of your position vector is given by Rf minus the Ri. So, the position vector final of the, uh, of the particle minus the initial position vector of your particle moving along this path. Okay? So, the delta R here is a vector quantity also. 
So as you can see here, we can find the delta r by, you know, so kung tanaw ni nato, so using sa katong atuang vector that we know about the graphical method na katong if I have uh, ano here, if I have a vector here, so suppose this is our ri, because I will just put uh, arrow above, so it doesn't matter ha, kasi uh, even though na I arrow above or a bold letter, that's still a vector, okay? So even though wala siyang arrow dili above the r here, but it is a bold letter, so meaning it is a vector quantity. So this vector also, as you can see here, kanisha is your delta r, di ba? Delta r. Then the vector, say we have here the r f. So as you can see here, so we can uh, have this relationship. So di mong gutama ka ingon bitso nga delta r is equal to r f minus r i because of the fact nga we are dealing with vectors. Uh, we will not uh, uh, had some basic operation like arithmetic just like a scalar quantity, di ba? So we have here, so r i plus delta r f. So we have r i plus delta r and then the the resultant of r i plus delta r is the r f which is pointing from the tail of your r i towards sa imuhang uh, towards the head sa imuhang last vector so that is your r f and by that we can say that your delta r is really equal to r f minus r i the position vector okay so, okay, since we are dealing man with an xy plane, so we can actually kanang uh, we can actually express any vector uh, in xy plane as say x i hat plus y j hat. So meaning that your r i can ashay a coordinate na x or y. So meaning ashay at this point na ashay coordinate na x or can I put this as i para initial siya x i y i and at this point also na siya coordinate na x f y f so sa one dimension mang good dili na siya necessary nga na i i hat o j hat diba kay because we know nga naam siya sa x axis okay we know nga naam siya sa y axis so there's no need for you to put uh, i hat or j hat but you can actually uh, Pwede man mo siya iput, pero you can just describe nga to the left or to the right, upward, downward, and that is actually uh, a very close description of the direction of any uh, particle moving in uh, one dimension. So here, it is not, it is difficult to say upward and downward, then to the left at saka to the right, because we are dealing naman with two dimension, meaning ato nang gimerge ang duha ka dimension into uh, into one motion stone particle like x and y so that is why any uh, position vector can be represented by this where x and y are the positions okay so kung nata sa one dimension in motion in x we have delta x is equal to xf minus xi sinana lang di ba or in y component so we have here yf minus yi okay so this is for the y axis and this is for the x axis so by this we can also uh, rewrite our delta r as equal to delta say delta x i hat plus i minus yes plus delta y j hat so we can write that one as our uh, delta r okay kasi position a uh, vector naman siya in two dimension okay so that is the different definition of the displacement vector so at later time delta t so the object is moving from point a to point b of this particular path then we have to get the displacement of the vector from point a i mean the the displacement of the particle from point a to point b so which is given by this equation okay so again, we have to treat this one as a vector quantity, okay? So vector quantity na siya, meaning we have to deal with i hat, j hat, and so on, okay? 
So after sa mong position vector, we will now deal with velocity vector. Okay, so sa velocity vector na to, same lang gihapon. Okay, so we have the average is equal to the displacement divided by the time interval delta t. Okay, so the average velocity is given by the v here. So again, wala siyang arrow kasi uh, bold naman siya. So meaning it is a vector quantity. So v na ay arrow ay na ay underline sa taas meaning it is average. Or some book uses uh, average sa ubus. Dili? Without the arrow. Okay, so ave without the arrow. Ay without the underline sa taas. Okay, so we have the displacement vector, the change of your position divided by the over some interval time. Okay. So, again, ang imuhang velocity is a vector quantity also, just like the displacement, which has the same direction as your delta r. Okay, because the delta t is actually a, a scalar quantity, so it will not change the direction of, a. Uh, it will not matter kung, I mean, the delta t is not a vector quantity because time is not a vector quantity, diba? So... Of course, mabase na gud ang imong average velocity direction to the dis the direction of the displacement vector. Okay? So here makita nato nga uh, since we are dealing with vector quantity again, so the delta t here is a scalar quantity that if you divide with a vector quantity, it will not change the direction, but it will just change the magnitude of the average velocity. Okay, so just like what we did sa ito ang uh, chapter 2 about vectors. So, it will just change the magnitude. Okay, so this is a positive scalar quantity. So, it will not change the direction. Rather, it will just change the magnitude. Unless, this is a, you know, a negative scalar quantity. But remember, delta t is always positive. Okay, because time is always moving forward. So, yeah, that's it. So, the, aver the average velocity vector between points is independent of the path taken. So, always remember that. So, as you can see here, the delta r, the delta r is not dependent on the path. Okay? It is just, it is only dependent on the point A chaka point B. Okay? So, just like sa imuhang average uh, just like say, among displacement the average velocity is not dependent on the of the particle of the path of the particle taken but it is just dependent on the initial position vector chaka sa final position vector okay so just uh, that is the definition of your uh, velocity average velocity now just like what we did sa one dimension remember ha na imong average velocity is uh, zero if imuang particle is mubalik sa iyang point okay sa iyang initial point for example if mudagan si particle kay mo ni A mo ato siya ni B tapos mabalik na mo siya ni A of course the average displacement or the displacement is equal to zero because mabalik man siya sa iyang initial position then since imong displacement is zero of course the average velocity is still equal to zero because delta r is zero same lang yapon sa what we did sa kinematics in one dimension now for here for the speed and the dis distance which are the uh like the scalar you know scalar like sani scalar na um, kanang dili hindi siya kanang parang ano uh not actually the uh kanang counterpart in scalar quantity but actually uh, yung definition is for distance is of course it's not a vector quantity and the speed is not a, again a vector quantity remember that the average speed is not equal to average velocity okay so mo na ang mo na to na 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 to nga average speed is not necessarily equal to average velocity okay so this is i i'm going to 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 stress it here because we are talking about vectors mang good so baka inig adto na to sa atong mudip ta og uh, go on sa study about two dimensional motion what you're going to do is uh, ma confuse ka i mean ma confuse ka sa 
uh, the definition of average speed and average velocity okay so that's the definition of your uh, average speed at saka average velocity okay so yeah that's it so now again after sa average velocity vector now we are dealing with the instantaneous velocity vector which i which kung i recall na tong definition sa instantaneous that is the velocity at that instant I mean at that instant time sa may velocity at that specific time okay so you have to consider again a motion of a particle moving in xy so suppose yung uh, xy coordinate system is like this okay so we have this origin so we have different position vectors diba so we have like so can i draw something so if not a position vector here sa ato ang delta r1 so i will just put it as say pointing this is your r i and this is your rf okay so this is, that is a definition of the position vector now sa instantaneous mong good we have to take the limit of your time interval i mean what i mean is we have to take the limit of the average velocity vector as the time interval goes to zero meaning approach na to og zero ang atong delta t until uh, until na makakuha tag usaka point where in that line is tangent to that path okay for example gusto na kukuha on ang instantaneous velocity vector at point a so what what we did here is we just have to take the limit of delta t i the limit of your average velocity as the time interval goes to zero meaning mugamay 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 until such time nga usa na lang ka uh, usa na lang ka point ang iyahang ma intersect okay so that is i mean uh, until such thing nga uh, ang imuhang point diri hantod sa mugamay 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 siya usa na lang ka point ang mo mo like mo mo touch sa atong linya okay so that is like tangent tangent to the path okay so here so again, so kung pagamyo na ito nga ang delta T, what will happen is mugamay po ang path, I mean mugamay po ang imong delta R. I mean not necessarily mugamay, I mean imong delta R, mo, you know, kung mugamay imong delta T, what happened to delta R will, as you can see, is it become larger? Okay, so don't worry about that. So uh, what I mean is that, uh, if mugama yung delta t, it will approach, 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 approach to the point A because ito yung kukuni natin yung instantaneous velocity at point A. Okay? So, yeah, so that's it. That's the instantaneous velocity. Now, remember always that the uh, that the instantaneous velocity, when I say instantaneous velocity, that's me, that means nga velocity na siya. Because I am not going to say instantaneous velocity always because it is very hassle for my part to always say instantaneous velocity. So the physicist uh, tried to, you know, you know, kind of less ang hassle, especially for physics teachers. So they just used velocity lang. Okay, so just like what we did sa tong one dimension. Okay, so yeah, that's the uh, definition of instantaneous velocity. But one thing, uh, na lang kayo note na aning uh, part. Remember that the average speed, okay, average speed is not equal to average velocity. We know that, okay? But of course, the magnitude of your speed, okay, can I say the magnitude of your speed is actually equal to the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity. Okay? So, muna siya ang uh, muna siya ang kung ano na dapat ninyo okay so kay since nga no ganing equal ang magnitude sa speed o sa magnitude sa velocity mean the instantaneous velocity I mean because of the fact that your displacement uh, becomes like mahimo na siya ang distance so meaning that at this point what will happen is that the displacement is equal to again the distance na kasi specific point naman na iyang gikwan gina 
uh, ginapasabot gina niya nga kung na ko ang velocity at this point at at that at that instant okay so remember the path of the particle has so many uh, vel uh, velocity vector here i mean the instantaneous velocity okay at this point at any point okay for the path of the particle <coughs> So, uh, the next kinematic variable that we are going to discuss, ah, okay, so by the way, uh, again, so this one is again, uh, the instantaneous velocity is again can be written down as V, okay, so can I put an arrow, so we have here Vxi hat plus Vyj hat, so inanaan na to always ang ato ang vector can you know just xy plane okay so we have to to express any velocity vector or any variable nga kinematics into i hat and j hat into x and y components so just like sa atong delta r so delta r is actually equal to x hat plus y j hat i mean x i hat plus y j hat okay so just like what we did here <clears throat> sa ato ang a position vector now always remember ha that the direction of the instantaneous velocity vector is always tangent to the path at that point so unlike kay, since imong delta r i mean the displacement is in this quantum in this uh, in this direction so meaning kay, since imong instantaneous velocity a direction is dependent on the displacement I mean, yeah, the displacement vector at that specific point. So, therefore, they must be in the same direction. So, kanilang diri, ang imuhang delta r, ay mong average velocity, must be on the same direction as your delta r. Okay? So, yeah, that's the t. How about the acceleration vector? So, another kinematic variable that we're going to discuss, and we have to extend this one into... Uh, Two dimension so we have here I suppose now we particle again nga, na mag move sa path like this one and I have here the origin then we have the y x so your x this is the positive one and ito yung uh, positive na y diba? so this is actually the definition of your Cartesian coordinate system so again sa acceleration vector nimo is na akay change of your velocity divided by change of your time diba? so if i have here a point a tapos point b and this is the path of the particle then again the position vector is pointing from the origin towards that point so kung ano average acceleration from point a to point b so at that specific point ang imuhang a velocity vector, I mean the instantaneous velocity vector at point A is Vi at time Ti. Okay? So, ni move na pud imong velocity, increasing, I mean, changing it to Vf na pud at time Tf. So, we have to find the average acceleration from point A to point B. So, in order to do that, we just have to get the, uh, the velocity vector Vf minus the velo velocity vector vi divided by tf minus ti so that's how you do it okay so again your average acceleration is bold meaning that is a vector quantity at saka may underline siya taas meaning average so again some book uses ave instead of underline above uh, the symbol of the acceleration so it doesn't matter it's just a notation okay so next the acceleration or the average acceleration can also be, you know, can also be expressed in two dimension. So, in order to express this one nga in two dimension siya, so we have to express the average acceleration in terms of unit vector. So, we have here, uh, we have ax i hat, that is the average of acceleration along x, plus ay j hat, tapos the average acceleration of your component in y i mean y component of your acceleration okay so yeah so the average velocity again is a vector quantity directed along delta v so because of the fact that your average uh, 
Oh, this is this is not the average velocity, okay? So this is average accelerations. I'm so sorry. So sorry about that. So this must be average acceleration. So the average acceleration is a vector quantity directed along the change of your velocity. Okay, so the change of your velocity uh, that is the direction of your acceleration. Okay, so because of the fact that the average acceleration is dependent on delta v. And again, delta t is a scalar quantity that will not change the direction of the average acceleration, but it can change the magnitude unless if among delta t is a negative scalar quantity but since delta t is always positive since time is always moving forward then therefore therefore delta t is always greater than zero okay so again the instantaneous acceleration is we just have to get the limit of your delta v i mean the average acceleration as your time interval goes to zero so meaning pagam yun na to pagam yun na to atong delta t until such time nga mawato na siya sa specific point okay so just like mm, this okay so I will just put it here so I will just give you some insight of how to calculate the acceleration okay so okay dili magud na to siya ma like atong ma visualize on how to calculate the acceleration vector in terms of you know uh, looking at the path of the object moving in two dimensions like xy plane so i just put here a uh, suppose na koy car na accelerate in a circle okay so of course kung na accelerate siya so meaning nag change siya og velocity okay since na aman siya sa kwan you know rounding a curve so a curve can be the uh can completely describe using the xy plane or the motion in two dimension so we have here the velocity vector at this point chaka the velocity vector at point p2 so we have p1 at chaka p2 so from point p1 to p2 nag change ang car of speed from v1 to v2 at time t1 to time t2 okay so what you're going to do to find the the delta v here is of course we can represent our car by a point using the particle model same also for p2 so to find this one we just have to use the katong polygon method the tail head to tail method in in adding adding vectors okay so we have here v1 so again from the equality of vectors sa to ang chapter 2 nga vectors we can actually put vector v1 here as long as they have the same direction, they have the same length, which is the magnitude, then they are equal. Okay, so I have to uh, I have to put v two here, so they have the same length, meaning they have the same magnitude, and they also have the same direction. So v two here is it just equal to v two here. So to find delta v, which can be uh, directed in this direction, delta v. So here. Uh, again, so just like what we did sa tong position, so we have delta v1, we have this vector which is a delta v, tsaka yung resultant mo is a v2, di ba? So from the tail of the first vector towards the head of the last vector. So we just have to uh, calculate as this one as v, okay, v1, tsaka plus delta v, and that is equal to v2. So that is actually, uh, kung atong ibutang si V1 dito sa pika, so that is delta V is equal to V2 minus V1. So that's how you do uh, adding uh, adding vectors uh, using graphical, okay? So that's how you do delta V. So kung dili mong delta V nga direction, then therefore we can uh, expect na ato ang acceleration, the average acceleration is pointing also in this direction, Okay? So, the average acceleration is again delta V divided by delta T. Okay, so as you can see here, money and direction. So, same sila og direction. Now, how about sa instantaneous? So, I have to get uh, the acceleration at specific point. Okay, so at this point. So, maoni ang naka-difference atong average acceleration tsaka the instantaneous acceleration. 
kasi di ba for average acceleration the uh, delta v is always in the same direction as your uh, average acceleration okay but for this case kasi for instantaneous is not always true because there are times nga yung acceleration mo is not on the same direction as your velocity okay take for example if again natay katong ano pod katong car nga moving in a you know in a circle or in a curve so ni round siya sa curve kan di ba so here natay v1 again then v2 and then i have to find the instantaneous acceleration at point p1 so ko na kung instantaneous acceleration here so what you're going to do we have to approach the delta t as goes to zero so meaning that your p2 will approach us to p1 kanang gamay na lang kayo yung kuan gamay na lang kayo until such time nga ang iyahang makuan iyahang ma 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 form nga line is tangent to a certain path so ito yung path ng particle natin tapos itong v1 is tangent to point p1 so meaning tangent p1 meaning nag intersect lang siya of a certain like a certain uh circle or a line intersect at only at one point okay so naman ang tangent line di ba so since we get the average acceleration here so the average acceleration i mean the in instantaneous acceleration always points to concave side of path so meaning it is always pointing inward as you can see here if your object is moving along a curve so meaning ni mura siya ni ni kuan ba kung tanan mo sa perfect circle di ba i mean kung uh, as you can see sa kanang car di ba kung mukuan mo a circle na, na ma feeling yung nga the object is accelerating because of the fact nga mura mo ka nang ipakuan mo niya sideway di ba so mo na ang effect sa etong delta v i mean the instantaneous acceleration at that specific point okay so acceleration siya not on the same direction as your v1 okay so i will just tell you more about this one in uniform circular motion because this is very important now there are times na pod nga your instantaneous acceleration or simply the acceleration vector is in the same direction as your delta v and that is if your object is moving in a straight line as you can see here so kung nag move siya ag straight line din wala problema the delta v is still in the same direction as your acceleration okay so that is if your object is moving in a straight line okay so i will just uh, i will just talk more about this sa uniform circular motion kay mas makarelate man ta ni sa uniform circular motion <coughs> excuse me so yeah so because of this one uh, because of the fact na imuhang uh, acceleration if your object is moving around the curve so what will happen is na possibility nga na ay uh, two components ato ang acceleration vector okay na siya two components first is na siya parallel component then second is na siya perpendicular component so unsa may difference ani nilang duha nga components sa acceleration so again <coughs> so if if we look at the the path of the particles so if we extend this one to a certain circle okay, ito siya extend to a perfect circle uh, assuming nga perfect ni siya okay perfect circle na na ay center of course okay at point o so if nag kuha na imong kan ba if nag uh, if nag imong object kay nag move in this particular path okay so in a curved path what will happen is the acceleration again is again pointing inward sa imuhang circle okay sa imong path as you can see here now the normal to path at a uh, normal to path meaning that the 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 uh, the meaning the direction of your of your acceleration is exactly perpendicular to the velocity so mo nang normal siya okay so as you can see here if this is your a uh, point o and if i have to extend a uh, radius r say na ko radius r diri extend na ko siya so this line is normal to the 
path of the particle or the velocity vector. As you can see here, 90 degrees siya, diba? So, mo nang itawag siya normal to path at P. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah. So, what, what we did here is just like that. Okay, so suppose ang ato ang acceleration is not normal to the path, meaning na, ash, na, na wala siya sa in the same line as your radius r. Okay, assuming nga, kani atong particle's path can be extended to a circle, a perfect circle, uh, centered at point O, and then the radius of that circle are all constant wherever you go. So, the normal to path at P is actually the radius. So, meaning if we have an uh, object here, ang iyahang, uh, the velocity vector is exactly perpendicular to the uh, point P, at point P. Okay? So, muna ang pasabot sa normal. So, normal perpendicular. So, if I, uh, ito din siya makuha ng mga normal. Okay? So, if I have a vector A pointing inward, but not necessarily on the, uh, on the same line as your R, so, what you're going to do, na asya duha ka component. So, we have the parallel. So, as you can see, this is the parallel component. At saka ito yung perpendicular component. So, unsam de ay ang ang kuan ani nilang doon. So, what is the difference between these two component and why is it so important? Okay? So, a particle is moving to a circle is a very important case in, you know, circular motion. Kasi, uh, the acceleration is actually constantly changing. Okay? So, what do you mean by that? So, constant, there are three ways to change the acceleration, di ba? So, naman tas impression good nga. Katong ato ang one dimension na tas impression nga. The only way that we can change the acceleration is to change the velocity, which is correct. But since we are talking about motion in two dimensions, so there are three ways to actually, you know, change the acceleration of an object. First is, of course, to change the magnitude of the velocity. Second is to change the direction. So, you have to take note of that. So, kahit uh, constant yung velocity mo, but the object is still a constantly changing direction, so the object is still accelerating. Okay? And the third way is if there is a change in direction, at saka my change of velocity. So, that's how you change the acceleration of a particle or or an object. Okay? So, muna ang iyahang, ang iyahang important. So, we have here a parallel a parallel component. So, this is actually tangential component or as some physicists call this one as <coughs> excuse me. Some physicists call this one as tangential acceleration. Tsaka yung perpendicular nga component of your acceleration uh, we call this one as the radial acceleration. Okay, so radial because it is pointing in the same line as your radius. So that is, it is actually radial. At saka tangential siya because that specific component of your acceleration exactly intersect one point of the particle's path. So as you can see sa itong object, di ba? So yeah, that's it. So that's how we deal with components so uh, what are the effect of these two components of the particle so may effect niya sa motion sa particle so first imong tangential component will actually change the magnitude of the velocity okay because of the fact as you can see here so kung tanaw na to dali okay so na ako ay v1 tapos ito yung change ng velocity ko Okay, so I changed my velocity. So we have here. I no no no. I have point v1, chaka my v2 ako. So the delta v is this one, diba? Of course, that is your delta v. Now the delta v, since your your object is moving in that particular direction, so what will happen is that your a is in the same direction as your v because nag movement siya in a straight line, diba? So this is a case where the a is tangential so they are moving on the same direction so this will change the speed of the 
particle. Okay? So, as you can see, yung veto mo, uh, as you can see, sa length niya, ni taas siya in terms sa V1, which means nga ni taas ang V2, meaning ni, ni, uh, ni paspas yung speed, ni change yung speed, which is greater than V1. As you can see here, and the change is just the delta V. How about this one? Uh, for the radial acceleration or the perpendicular component of acceleration, so we have this one, okay? So the acceleration nga perpendicular, so if mag-move ang imong object from V1 to V2, what will happen is uh, nag-change siya o direction. So pointing man yung V1 dali, imong V2 kay pointing dali, di ba? So it will change direction as ni move ka to circle. So mula siya ginani ba? So kung ako na siyang i-draw, actually to a circle draw lang na ko siya okay so mo ni akong point P1 mo ni akong point P2 nga na ay velocity nga say V2 tapos we have here V1 okay so at this point so, so assuming that we have a perfect circle ha so that is radius R radius R and of course, since we are talking about a circle, so meaning the change of your angle, okay, change of your angle, as the particle moves from point P1 to P2, is actually delta, uh, is actually phi. As you can see sa atong kwa, ba? So if we have to get the, the change of your velocity, what will happen is, kani, ba? Kung kuha to ang change of velocity, kani ang makita na to. Diba? So as you can see, if, as you can see that your V1 and V2 are on the same length, meaning that they have the same magnitude, then therefore, it does not change the magnitude of the uh, velocity or the speed, but only change the direction. So as you can see from here, V1, we change na po siya direction here. So at, at later time, di na put siya. At later time, di na put siya. But the velocity is constant all throughout the circle if you have the perpendicular component. Again, kung perpendicular component, it will change the direction of velocity but not the particle speed or the magnitude of the velocity. But for the uh, tangential component or the parallel component of the acceleration, it will change the magnitude but not the direction. So as you can see here, your velocity is still in the same direction at later time t, di ba? So mo yung velocity at t1 and then same na yung direction in velocity t2. But the velocity as you can change, as, as you can see, nag-change yung magnitude. As you can see sa length niya. So that's how you deal with uh, components of acceleration vectors. Okay, so I think <coughs> it's better to move on with the projectile motion. Okay, so we are done with uh, almost every kinematic variable. So we are done with position vectors. We are done with displacement vectors. We are done with velocity and the acceleration vectors. So yeah, we have to, uh, we have to like, um, apply what we have learned about the kinematic variables to a certain system like a projectile motion is a very good example for motion in two dimension chaka circular motion is also a very good example for a object moving in two dimension okay so here so again a projectile by definition is any body or any object that is given an initial velocity and then follows a path determined entirely by the effects of gravitational acceleration and air resistance. Okay, so, ang path na follow sa project that is actually called trajectory. So, if you are actually, uh, kung wala kong trajectory, then meaning that is the path followed by a project that. Okay, again, so we have to take note here that in order to solve the projectile motion in our way, like using the kinematics in one dimension, we have to, you know, we have to make an assumption. First, we have to assume that there's no air resistance. 
because if there's an air resistance what will happen is we cannot predict the motion of a anybody in projectile because of the fact that there is a variation of results okay then second assumption here is we have to neglect the rotational and the revolution quants earth okay so the rotational motions earth and the revolution of earth around the sun we have to neglect that because of course it is it can actually it can actually vary a result although very small but of course in physics that is greater na samoa okay and then third assumption is we have to neglect the curvature of the earth because the curvature will also uh, will also affect the motion of a projectile okay so it will not necessi uh, deletion necessarily true if you are talking about uh, the kinematics in one dimension okay so we have to find that uh, kinematics of your projectile motion in two dimensions so using what we had in kinematics in one dimension diba so not a free fall chaka meron tayong motion in x axis okay so take note that the projectile motion is always confined to a vertical plane nga naman so meaning ver vertical plane so we have the x y then at a certain point zero i uh, point o so we have the origin here ito yung x y natin so usually ito, ito na yung ginagamit natin na a uh, cartesian coordinate which is of course what we always usually use diba okay because yung x mo dito is positive tsaka yung upward ng y mo is positive downward negative then to the left is actually negative diba so just like uh, semon cartesian so we just have to stick with this okay but you can also change if you want so it doesn't matter okay we just have the same answer but for this one this is just for convenience kasi okay para di na mo malibog sa inig solve na to mga problems okay so projectile motion again is always confined to a vertical plane nga naman nga nung di man siya mo uh, mo move sideway para na siya z axis di ba so because of the fact that the motion or the body of the projectile and in projectile motion is actually interacting with the gravitational acceleration so meaning that because of the fact na nasa effect of gravitational acceleration which is pulling the body downward and for the fact na wala siya air resistance what will happen is it will just follow a path in just vertical plane i mean in xy plane so this siya mag sideway kay if na siya air resistant what will happen is pwede siya maka sideway so mopud na ang uh, mopud na ang what uh, uh reason why we neglect air resistance okay so yeah so which is determined by the direction of the initial velocity as you can see here now kung nakita nato sa to ang xy plane we have a vertical uh, we have a projectile motion going like this diba so yes here's a catch okay so actually we can uh, the projectile motion is uh, as what i said is motion in two dimension which can actually be like you know kanang pwede to siya separate into two independent motion so we have a long x chaka a long y so the projectile motion along x is actually have a constant velocity motion in horizontal okay so kay since constant velocity man siya what will happen is yung acceleration the horizontal acceleration or the x component of the acceleration of your uh, projectile motion is equal to zero kasi yung velocity mo is always constant in x them and in x axis meaning so as you can see here i have a projectile motion given by initial velocity with an angle alpha sub nat so this is the initial angle where you know where atong ilunch ang atong projectile so the vox is equal to v1x is equal to this vector is equal to v3x and also equal to this velocity at this point because of the fact that it is projectile in constant velocity motion in horizontal motion 
yung projectile mo is in constant velocity. Okay? So, yeah, that's it. Now, for the for the motion in y-axis, so, we can just follow the free-fall motion. Okay? So, the projectile is actually in constant acceleration equal to negative g, the negative 9.8 meters per second square just like what we had sa free fall so more siya free fall diba so as you can see here more siya free fall with the without the uh, x nga motion okay so this is the separate nga uh, motion along x tsaka ito mong ito yung separate motion along y so if we combine this one and this motion what we had is this trajectory of your projectile okay so yeah, that's it. That's that, that's just the the assumption of your projectile motion. So again, ha, si projectile nimo is actually the ad addition. So projectile, okay, I will just put projectile is actually the motion is equal to the x motion. X motion, I will just put motion here plus the y motion y motion which is the free fall okay so we add lang na nimo then we have a path like this okay so again kung sa x motion nimo kung tanaw nimo ang x na mga uh, horizontal motions e muhang projectile the uh, in horizontal, the velocity is constant. So, meaning there is no acceleration. Ax is zero for the projectile. Then, for the y-axis, it's just like a free fall. But this time, yung, ano mo, yung acceleration is still equal to negative g. Okay, so as you can see here, yung v sub uh, uh, y mo is correspond to this v sub not y here. Meaning, initial tong v sub not y ha. Uh, Doon sa ating kwan kasi kinematics on dimension, we use, di ba, VI as our initial. So, it's just a notation again. So, don't worry about that. Then, your V1I is again directed to this one. Then, your V2. Again, at the maximum height of the projectile, we have the velocity along Y equal to zero. But, we have the velocity, meaning, ang imong velocity lang here, is actually purely horizontal. Okay? So that is why mo move siya pa dung to in effects of the gravitational pull sa imong earth. Diba? So which is the negative g. So that is why it will keep moving here. It will eventually stop in y here. Okay? But it will actually move, move, move from here. Kung dili mang good negative imong, at kung di mang good zero imong y, what will happen is the project will move pa layo dito siya. Okay, because the y is not equal to zero, but at some point of the trajectory sa imong projectile, na just specific point dito na imuhang y is equal to zero, meaning the y velocity is equal to zero. Okay, so just like what we did sa tung free fall, na at the maximum height, the y component of the velocity is actually equal to zero. Okay, so again, the projectile is the motion along x which is constant tsaka motion along y which is in free fall so ito yung uh, path ng projectile mo okay yeah so yeah okay so we have to take note some terms here because if you are going to solve a problem involving projectile motion kasi is usually mauna ang ang gina uh, gina ko na to kanang gina find like a range is actually the distance from the initial position of your uh, of your um, body padulong sa kanus sa ni strike sa imuhang ground okay so that is the range now the height put the maximum height is actually the distance from the ground padulong sa maximum nga uh, uh, asa siya ka nang stop meaning the y is eventually stop at some point that is the maximum height okay 
So the projectile, if we have to take note, kasi the projectile is actually in symmetry. So meaning that uh, what you what you will uh, kumakuha ni mo, times 2 lang ni mo diri. So muna akong tawag ng symmetry. Assuming that there is no air resistance. Okay? So that is actually projectile motion. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so just like what I said, nga imuhang projectile is imuhang uh, acceleration, imuhang projectile kay naasay uh, in y axis naasay ay is equal to negative g. So meaning the acceleration along y is negative g. So meaning ana that your that your velocity along y is constantly changing but at the same rate. Okay, constant pa ni acceleration, di ba? Which is equal to negative g. Or that is equal to negative 9.81, di ba? Meters per second squared. Now, for ax is equal to 0, so the uh, the horizontal motion of your projectile motion is actually in constant velocity. So, therefore, your ax is equal to 0. At wala mong push any change of direction. So, therefore, uh, there's no acceleration along x-axis okay so constant na yung velocity so therefore we can actually rewrite our kinematics equation diba so we had vx in v sub x uh, plus axt so we have that equation diba so okay since your ax is zero so we can take that one as zero okay so we have your x is equal to x sub zero so scanning sub zero meaning huh, that is initial so we have plus v sub x t so that is the initial velocity along x component that was plus one half a x t squared and again a x is zero so that is why wala we makita during uh, one half a x t squared so we have this x component of the uh, kinematic equation for projectile now for y component or you can also extend this one kadi ba naman upat so we can also extend this one but again dili man kesha Dili man kay to shock one, dili man kay to shock kanang gamit kay for example, if the third kinematic equation so we have vx squared, you got to v sub not x squared, then we have plus 2ax, then we have the change of your x, diba? So your ax is still equal to zero, and then we still get the same equation as before. So basically, it is useless to just put all of the kinematics equation the four kinematics equation that we had so for y component so we have here v sub y minus v sub not y minus gt of course still na gap po ng uh, acceleration along y okay kay di siya zero then the uh, the position along y so we have y is equal to y sub not plus v sub not y t minus one half gt squared okay then same lang gihapon din sa katong uh, the third kinematic equation, di ba? So we have v sub y squared is equal to v sub not y squared minus 2g tapos y minus y sub not, di ba? Or y sub i initial initial position, di ba? So mao na, di ba? So yeah, then the fourth kinematic equation, I think it is about the average of the uh final velocity chaka initial velocity di ba so still uh and hindi hindi, hindi siya kanang important kay dito okay so yeah so that's the uh, that's the kinematics equation for project so kani siyang equation is actually the basis on how to like completely describe the body in projectile motion okay so we will use this equation okay so i will just uh, So yeah, I think that's uh this this is the projectile motion, and again we are not actually kanang uh, discrediting the fact that your r or the position vector is still equal to x i hat plus y j hat, and the velocity is still equal to v x i hat plus v y j hat. Okay, so we still not discrediting that part but ato lang ibot diri is we have to get the x component chaka y component okay that that's just how you do here okay 
yeah so next oh yeah so we just have to put the uh, another kinematics equation that we had which is of course you know same lang gihapon no big deal so y minus y sub not so kaning mga walay y sa mga sub not is actually the final position okay so we just have to uh, change a little bit okay again it doesn't matter how this is just a notation so uh, as long as i actually kanang define this variable then you can actually you know uh, keeps uh, solving forward keeping forward with your solution so yeah again so your v vector is actually equal to vx i hat plus a vy j hat so you can just put here your vx as this one then vy as this one so we have here v sub not x i hat chaka meron tayong v sub not y minus gt which represents your j hat okay so hindi pa rin nawawala yung essence ng velocity vector chaka position vector and then your position vector is actually equal to x i hat plus y j hat then we have here x sub not plus v sub x t and this is i hat plus y sub not plus v sub y t minus one half g t squared and this is j hat so now hindi pa rin nawawala yung essence of your position vector being a two-dimensional system okay so yeah that's the uh quan okay so yeah so we have to extend again the projectile motion Kasi yung projectile motion mo is given by initial velocity, di ba? So, V sub not. Then, meron din siyang initial angle nga, say, alpha sub zero or alpha sub not. With respect to the horizontal axis, as you can see here. So, example of projectile is when you kick a ball. So, as you can see here, you kick ni mo ang soccer ball, it will follow a trajectory just like the projectile. So, given by the initial angle alpha sub not, and then given by also the initial velocity v sub not okay so by this by using the trigonometric functions so the v sub not with the orientation of also alpha sub not we know that the adjacent side is actually the uh, the x component of the initial velocity so that is your v sub uh, not x at saka yung v sub y mo is actually the y component along i mean the y component of your uh, initial velocity which is v sub not y so kay since na amantay alpha sub not so we can actually get v sub not x is equal to the magnitude saka the cosine alpha of initial angle then we have the vy is equal to v sub not then sine of the initial angle which is the alpha sub not okay so yeah, so this is the x and the y component of the of the uh, I mean this is the initial, okay? Hindi ito ko na initial. Kasi yung mga vx tsaka vy, ito yung mga final velocities. Okay? At tsaka yung v sub not x, v sub y, v sub not y, ito yung mga initial velocities. Then, yung x at saka y, ito yung final positions. Then, we have x sub not, y sub not, ito yung mga initial positions. Okay, so, I will just define it here para makita ninyo good nga on side difference ninyo sa itong notation in chapter 3, like kinematics in uh, one dimension. Okay, so, we can put this one here in our four kinematics equation like what we had here so we know that v sub not x is equal to v i mean vx is equal to v sub not x which is equal to v sub not cosine of alpha sub not okay so ako siyang i substitute here then your x is actually equal to v sub not x t so just like what we did above so kanisha Okay. 
okay so we have here is equal to v sub naught cosine of alpha sub naught then we have t so again it is in our best position if we let x sub naught and y sub naught is equal to zero at initial time equal to zero so meaning we have to put our origin sa katong object mismo because it is our convenience kasi if we have to put our origin for the on the object okay that is why we will not like dealing anymore with the initial positions at saka initial time okay so here kasi itong mga time na to is actually the final time okay the total time na it takes to 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 file to uh, for an object to follow a projectile motion okay the next we have v sub y then we have v sub not y minus gt then we have here v sub not sine of alpha sub not minus gt okay so ako lang gipang uh, gipang substitute ang mga v sub not y to v sub not sine of the initial angle then we have y so again your y sub not here is equal to zero because that is the origin then we have here v sub not y t minus one half g t squared then we have here v sub not y is equal to v sub not sine of alpha sub not t minus one half g t squared so that's how you do with the position along y at saka yung other kinematic variable mo so if we actually get the third kinematic equation which is v sub not x squared diba is equal to v sub not x squared so still just equal to v sub x is equal to v sub ox which is equal to v sub not cosine of alpha sub not then the other equation for your y component so we just have to get with uh, the third kinematic equation so we have v sub y squared then v sub y not squared minus 2g then y minus y sub not so yung y sub not no is equal to zero so we can let your v y squared as equal to v sub not y squared minus 2g y okay so ito yung kinematics equation mo okay so but again so still the same naman din makikuha natin dito diba so i think uh, magiging important lang to if uh, you are dealing with a variables na hindi makukuha sa two equations na ginagamit natin but usually uh, the equations that we will use is actually confined in these four equations okay so yeah so then we will move on to sample problems so we will now uh, solve some problems okay about projectile motion So I will just read the problem here. So we have a projectile is fired horizontally with a speed of 30 meters per second from the top of a cliff. So meron siyang initial speed of 30 meters per second, 80 meters high. Okay, How long will it take to strike the level ground at the base of the cliff? So what is the total time? Uh, it takes para yung object mo from the cliff upunta sa ground. Okay? And then next, how far from the foot of the cliff will it strike? So meaning, from the cliff, how far, uh, ano yung distance niya from the cliff toward kung saan siya nag-strike? So ito yung si X mo. Tsaka the C, with what velocity will it strike? So ano yung velocity niya at this point? So first, we just have to get the uh, A. How long will it take to strike the level ground at the base of the cliff? So first, you have to get actually the, uh, the uh, velocity. Okay, so the Y component of the initial velocity. So can I say V sub X? 
So instead of visab, I would just put visab not, okay? Para kita malibog sa ato ang sa ato ang sa ato ang kanang notation. So we have visab not x, visab not cosine of uh, say alpha sub not, the initial angle and then v sub y is equal to v sub not sine of alpha sub not okay so as you can see here the angle is actually uh, zero degrees kasi straight man siya na padung dito diba so as you can see here pa straight gud ang iyahang velocity okay so therefore wala siyang y component the initial component of your I mean the component of your initial velocity the y component is actually equal to zero and then your v sub not x is actually equal to um, actually equal to v sub not and ano yung angle nito na if if pa straight siya so the angle here is actually equal to zero degrees okay so based sa ito ang Cartesian coordinate system so v sub not times cosine of 0 degrees is equal actually equal to 1 so we uh, we will get with v sub not which is equal to 30 meters per second so remember kung magkuhan kayo mo projectile motion always uh, always calculate first the initial velocity components okay so we are done with that step and the second step is you have to decide if unsa man imong kwaon nga ko ai uh, unsay mong kwaon nga variable so meaning aktong kwaon nga variable is actually the time okay so time so time so we have here uh, we can use other equation so the untong equation nato so the time it takes from the uh, position here padung dari is we can actually use this one wala man tay x position okay so wala tay makuha aning equation but we can use this one kay na tay makuha ana di ba so we have here uh na ba tay makuha mm -hmm. yes i think na tay makuha ani or how about this one so the total time it takes is actually equal to v sub y ay wala tayo makuhaan ni because the v sub y waman tayo final velocity so we just have to stick with this equation so we have y is equal to v sub y t minus one half g t squared okay so v sub y is equal to zero so this whole term goes to zero then we have y is equal to negative one half g t squared. Again, just like what I said, you have to let the origin to be at the position of your object. So meaning at this position, we have here uh, 0, 0. Ito yung origin natin where x and y is equal to 0. Diba? So, but since ito yung origin natin, then therefore, yung downward is actually all negative so we can let y to be equal to negative so we have negative y Sana yun. so we have here okay, no, wala ko. so we have negative y is equal to negative one half gt squared then we can get t as equal to 2y divided by g square root okay so using algebra so makikuha naman na ninyo <clears throat> then what is y so the, the position of your object uh, from the cliff is actually 80 meters okay so the final position so the position the total time it takes from the final position okay is actually equal to how much uh, this is actually equal to 80 is it 80 80 diba 80 meters
kasi at this point kasi yung ito yung final position mo diba so we have x tsaka y so yung final position mo here is actually in a negative 80 diba so that is actually 80 so we have 2 times 80 divided by the g is equal to what is the answer of that so sorry about sa mga unnecessary noise because wala man to be hard so so that is actually equal to 4.04 seconds so meaning the total time it takes for this object to travel from here padung that is actually equal to 4.04 seconds so b how far from the foot of the cliff will it strike so meaning we have to find the x distance from here padulong dali okay so this is actually the range okay the range of the object so the range is actually given by this equation this is actually our range okay so we have here range is equal to x is equal to v sub naught x t so we have we have already like solve okay where is it? We, we, we already solve the uh the total time it takes para mo strike siya sa ground dire, which is 4.04 seconds and the initial velocity along x which is equal to 30 meters per second so we have 30 meters per second multiply with the 4.04 seconds so what is the x uh, distance so that is e actually equal to 121.2 meters so the distance from the cliff padung diri sa imuhang kung asa ni strike imong object is actually equal to 121.2 meters okay so i think that's it so therefore Ang imuang final position of the object is naasya coordinate na. We have here the 121.2, which is positive. Yung ano gani? Okay, mo object is moving to the right, and we know, kumon imuang kuan, uh, this is moving to the right man, diba? So this is positive. Then y is negative 80 because from our origin, downward man siya, diba? So just take note of that. So then, with what velocity will it strike? So ano yung magnitude ng velocity here? Okay, so we have to find the velocity along x tsaka velocity along y to find the magnitude of the velocity. So remember ha, that your velocity, the magnitude of the velocity, if we have two components, is just the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. So we have to find vx at tsaka vy at that certain point okay so ano yung vx nya so i will just put vx here so vx is actually equal to again equal again ito ng v sub not x which is equal to 30 meters per second kaya ano gani because it is a projectile motion with a constant velocity so kahit kahit saan ka man na point dito yung x component velocity mo is still equal to the initial initial component of the velocity along x okay so how about your y your y is din na siya zero pero na na siya component kaya ano gani kaya mo accelerate man siya in, with a value of negative 9.8 diba so meaning mag change imuhang velocity along y but at a constant rate so what is vy so we can actually use this equation to find vy okay is it yeah we have to find that equation so we have v sub not y minus gt so your v sub not y is zero because that is the initial v component along y and then your uh time is a total time it takes para mo strike siya sa ground which is equal to negative i mean a positive 4.04 seconds so we have here negative 9.8 multiply with 4.04 so how much is that 
so that is equal to 9.8 times 4.04 that is equal to negative 39 okay so sorry uh, the basa ang the answer is negative So the answer is negative 39. So negative 39.59. Uh, so negative meaning because of the fact nga the velocity is pointing downward. So meaning negative dapat siya. Okay? So imuhang velocity at point y. I mean velocity component in that point. So sorry galoding akong lapi. So, yeah, so next is you just have to take the square root of 30 squared, which is the v sub not a v sub x, chaka yung v sub y mo is negative 39.59 squared, and that's how you get the velocity. Okay, so makukuha mo yung velocity at that uh, point. So we have here, so okay, we have here negative 39. Uh, meters per second then taking the square root so we have 30 squared which is the uh, v sub x plus the negative 39.59 so I forgot 0.59 here okay then squared which is the v sub y so how much is that 30 squared plus 39 so you can actually calculate this one in your calculator so see if correct ba ko. So that is approximately 49.67 meters per second or approximately 50 meters per second. So that's actually the uh, velocity, the magnitude of the velocity at this point. So kung may mong siya with what velocity, so you have to take the magnitude. But if you specify niya kung anong component, then you just have to stick with what uh, component is asked if even x ba or, ch or y ba nga component okay so yeah that's it so let's move on to problem number two so a baseball is thrown with an initial velocity of 100 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal as shown find the maximum height and distance of it from the origin so we have to find out the maximum height And the distance down niya here, padulong diri. So, to find that one, at saka how far will be the baseball strike the ground. So, meaning the total time it takes para maabot siya diri. So, the total time here. Para maabot siya diha sa ground. Okay? So, again, so first things first is you have to get the component of the initial velocity. So, we have V sub not x v sub o cosine of 30 degrees which is the angle chaka v sub not y is equal to v sub not uh, sine of 30 degrees so what is the initial velocity so the initial velocity is 100 meters per second so 100 meters per second <clears throat> then cosine of 30 degrees so what is the initial velocity along x so 100 cosine of 30 that is 86.6 .6 meters per second then your initial velocity along y then that is 100 meters per second and that is sine of 30 degrees so how much is that so 100 sine of 30 that is 50 50 meters per second so you have you are done with the components so let's start with our uh, <clears throat> our unknown so find the maximum height and the distance of it from the origin so we find that in your maximum height so I will just put sub not here ha, para hindi tayo malito okay so we have to find the max how to find the maximum height so the maximum height represents the y position of your of your body at ano na siya sa pinaka top diba so we have here uh, i will just list y is equal to uh, v sub not y 
t minus 1 half gt squared. So to find the maximum height first, we don't need... Uh, so we know that at the maximum height, yung velocity natin along y is equal to 0. Okay? But yung velocity natin along x is still equal to v sub not x. Okay, di ba? Which is equal to 86 gapon, di ba? So, first, kasi hindi, ah, uh, meto na tayong v sub y, pero wala tayong time t. So, how to find that one? So, from the equation v sub y is equal to v sub not y minus gt, we can actually defi to find time here at that point h. So, meaning, we have to find the total at uh, the time it takes uh, for the object to move from the origin padulong sa uh, maximum height. So, we have to find the time here first. Okay? So, what is the time here? So, at the maximum point, your v sub y is 0. Diba? That is the initial, uh, the final velocity. Tapos, your v sub y, v sub not y, is actually equal to 50 meters per second. So, we have uh, V sub Y divided by G is actually equal to T. So, therefore, your T, the total time at the time it takes na imuang object maad to sa maximum height is actually equal to 50 meters per second divided by 9.8. So, how much is that? So, 50 divided by 9.8 is actually equal to 5.1 seconds. Okay? So, meaning the I, ang yung object will move from here to point here at time 5.1 seconds. Okay? So, then we have to substitute this one here para makuha na to si maximum height. So, we have here Y is equal to V sub not Y, which is 100. I mean, no, 50. Multiply with t, which is 5.1 seconds, minus 1 half, then the g, and then the time t squared for 5.1 squared. So, how much is that? So, 50 times 5.1, then we have here, so I will just calculate this one. So, if you have a cal calculator here, uh, there's a new side, you can... Uh, Sabayan nyo ako, okay? So, 127.55 meters. So, the maximum height is actually equal to 127.55. So, ito yung uh, y component ng position mo dito. At sabi niya naman is what distance of it from the origin. So, ano yung distance niya from here to the origin? So, we have to find the x component of your position at point here. Diba? We are done with the y component, man. So, we are... Uh, ito nang puta sa x component. So, how to find the x component? Okay? So, we will deal again with two equations. So, we have x is equal to v sub not xt. So, here, we can actually use kani because the position from point here to here is still equal to x. So, can I say... Uh, can I say x sub say x prime so para di na to siya di na to siya ma uh, confuse with our x here so can I say x prime okay so you will use the time it takes na para imuhang object mo add to sa maximum height which is equal to 5.1 iba so the initial velocity is 86.6 then multiply with 5.1 so how much is that so, we have 86.6 times 5.1 is equal to 441.66 meters. So, meaning at that point, the position vector is naashay coordinate. So, I can just erase. So, at this point, naashay position nga, I mean, naashay coordinate nga, 441. 0.66 og yang y component is actually equal to uh, we have here the 127 so we have 127.55 okay so 0.55 
So, ito yung uh, coordinates niya. Okay? So, yeah, at that position. So, next question is, we have to find the, how far will be the baseball strike the ground. So, ito yung range natin. So, range. From here to here. So, actually, sabi ko sa inyo, if, if walang air resistance yung projectile natin, we can actually multiply the x prime by 2 and the t, the total time it takes para ma to sa imuhang maximum height by 2 kasi symmetric naman siya, diba, dere? So, the total time it takes here is just equal to the total time it takes here. So, just multiply by 2 to find the total time para mo strike sa ground ang imuhang object. So, Mawala na siya ang, ang kuandre, ang uh, problema. Okay, so but in order to, para ma-prove na to kung symmetric ba siya, so we just have to stick with, uh, with the uh, kanang taas na solution. Okay, taas-taas na solution para makita ninyo. Okay? So, kajit lang kaya kung laptop din, ano yung makaya ang ka, ang ka, So, so, here, yeah. So, ito lang tanahon, ha? So, pwede mo na ito i-times magrugto ang x prime to find the x, the range, good. Okay, because symmetric mong ka siya, diba? And then, we just have to multiply the total at the time it takes, wala mo, ito siya sa height, maximum height, by 2. Okay, so we just have to stick with a very task na solution. So, the total time it takes. So, we can actually use uh, this equation. Pero mo, ito siya sa ground, di ba? So, we can actually use this equation or this equation to find the uh, the total time. So, how can we do that? So, to do that is so, yeah. So, to do that, let's, let's try to look at this equation. Diba? We have y is equal to v sub naught y t minus one half g t squared. So at this point, uh, at point mang good kung, di ba, mawin niya itong baseball, di ba? So at point mang good nga mo add to siya here, the coordinates here is na atay final position sa x, but zero ang ihang y. Di ba? Because of the fact na naraman siya sa x-axis. Diba? So, mamari yung coordinate. So, meaning, we can actually let the position of y is equal to 0. Diba? So, ta finding the time. So, mamari ang time na it takes padulong here, padulong dari ha. Okay, so that is why at final position yung, uh, yung final position niya is 0 at that, uh, uh, at that point, di ba? Kasi mo naman niya itong ginakover. Kaya the total time na nakover niya, okay? So, we have here, what is the final initial velocity? So, that is equal to 50. So, we have here, can I just? 1 half gt squared. So, rearranging the equation. Then, we have here, v sub not y. Then, we have here, uh, we have here, T, so, ako matangtang si T, then we have V sub not Y times 2 divided by G. So, we can actually uh, get directly, so 2, ano yung V sub not Y mo, which is 50, the initial velocity along Y, at saka yung G mo is 9.8, which is actually equal to, how much is this? So, 100 divided by 9.8. That is actually equal to 10.2 seconds. Okay, so the total time it takes from here, padulong that is actually 10.2 seconds. How about yung distance niya? The distance from here, the range, 
is again we can actually use this equation but this time the time t is actually the 10.2 seconds okay because that is the total time it takes para maato siya sa x niya nga position okay so at this final position so we have x or we can call it as the range is equal to v sub not x which is 86.6 then the total time is 10.2 so how much is that so we have 86.6 times 10.2 okay so you can actually calculate this one in your calculator so you have 883.32 meters okay so as you can see meron tayong ganyan so, kung tanawin na ito ang total time it takes, this is the total time it takes sa maari siya dari, and the distance from the origin, kung asa siya ni strikes sa ground is this one, to the uh, the maximum height. Diba? Mauman niyang iyahang katong dari nga part. Diba? Kanyang nga position sa x. Ay, ang total time it takes na maad to sa taas is 5.1. Diba? So, we can actually multiply this one by 2 and see if it's uh, if it if this coincides with these two uh, results that we have so the range due to the symmetric properties of the projectile or, or the trajectory of the projectile we just have to multiply the x prime by 2 okay so we have here 2 times 441.66 so pila man siya so can i multiply this one by 2 yeah, so that is 883.32. So yes, they are these coincides. How about the time? So the total time it takes <clears throat> is just equal to 2 times the time it takes to at, at, at the maximum height. Sa height. Okay, so which is equal to 2 times 5.1, which is again equal to 10.2 seconds which coincide with our result okay so just like what i said nice asymmetrical lang imuhang trajectories sa imuhang uh, projectile okay <clears throat> okay so how about this one so can we answer this one <clears throat> so last problem for projectile motion is this one so a body projected downward at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal from the top of a building 170 meters high. So first, I will just, wala mo siya drawing, so ako lang i-draw. So 170 meters high. So projected downward at an angle. So meaning if na ako projectile diri. So same lang gap po problem number 1. So iyahang downward at an angle is paana siya? <clears throat> <Ano? clears throat> so paano siya so this is uh, above the below the uh, the x axis na kay 30 degrees kay down projected downward man at an angle of 30 degrees and its initial speed is 40 meters per second yung initial speed niya how long will it take before striking the ground so suppose ito yung ground natin so, ito yung ground. So, ito yung, uh, ano yung time daw na uh, it takes para ma-strike siya here at the ground. And then, how far from the foot of the building will it take, will it strike? So, how far, so mean the distance from here, padulong dili, ang how far. And then, C is what angle will the horizontal will it strike? So, meaning, ano yung angle niya dito? Kasi, di ba, may velocity pa siya dito. So, ano yung angle niya with respect sa imong horizontal? So, ito yung uh, mga unknown natin. The x, the range, is unknown. At saka, the total time it takes here is still unknown. So, again, the first step of doing this one is you have to find the initial velocity components. So, v sub not x is equal to excuse me so we have 40 meters per second tapos cosine of 30 degrees so you have to take note ha nga yung 30 degrees mo is below the horizontal and that is actually equal to negative 30 degrees 
diba? So, meaning here that this is actually the uh, sign, the V sub not Y, at ito yung V sub not X natin ito. Okay? So, we have the cosine of negative 30 is still equal to positive cosine 30. So, 40 cosine of 30 is actually equal to 34.64 meters per second. How about your initial velocity mo? So, which is uh, still the same sa ating figure, di ba? Which is pointing to the left kasi yung V sub not X natin. So, therefore, positive yung uh, velocity niya along x how about yung velocity niya along y so we have to take note that the velocity along y is downward with respect sa tong origin so yung origin natin is yung object so therefore that is sine of negative 30 kasi below the horizontal siya so that is 40 sine of negative 30 that is negative 20 Okay, so, naglag na naman yung laptop na, na, na ako. Okay, so that is equal to Okay, so that is equal to negative 20 meters per second which is, of course, expected because your V sub not Y is pointing downward as you can see sa atong figure here. Now, first uh, kanang question is how long will it take para uh, before striking sa ground so meaning the total time it takes from here patulong dari so uh, kung tanaw na to na at this point kasi yung position vector mo yung coordinate ng position vector mo here is the x the final position which is unknown at saka negative 170 meter which is the position here diba Kung muna siya coordinate ba, so muna siya uh, x here, we don't know anything, tapos negative 170 meters. As you can see here, then we have to find the t. So, we just have to take note of the y components of the kinematic equation for projectile motion. Diba? Yung, uh, we have here the... Uh, so, ito yung component. So, x is unknown. Tsaka yung component niya sa at this point of the uh, position of your particle is 170 meter. Kasi yung 170 meter is below the origin. So, negative siya. So, the total time it takes, you just have to use this equation. Or, can we use this equation? So, we just have to use kung ano yung equation na gusto nyo. Or this one. So, V sub Y, V sub not Y minus GT. So, again, yung final velocity natin is unknown at this point. So, we cannot use this one. Pero here, we can actually use this one directly. Yes, we can use this one directly. So, Y is negative 170 meters. Then, your V sub not Y is equal to, this is 20, right? 20 meters per second so neg this is negative 20 meters per second times t minus one half then meron tayong gt meters per second squared then t squared so kukunin natin yung time it takes here okay so using actually the quadratic equation so we can find t squared then that is 9.8 divided by 2. So we have 4.9. Then we have plus 20t, then minus 170. Okay. So yeah. So a question Gary arrange. Okay, then simplifying. Then using quadratic equation to find t, so we have negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a so yung ano natin yung uh, a natin is 4.9 b natin is 20 c natin is negative 170 diba? so negative 20 plus minus the square root of 20 squared minus 4 
times 4.9 at saka C natin is negative 170 divided by 2 times 4.9. Okay, so we have here, uh, so you can just calculate the square root term sa imuhang uh, quadratic equation. So we have Ah, okay, so is this correct? Square root of the answer, so that is 61. So we have negative 20 plus minus 61 divided by, so that is 9.8. Okay, so we have T1 is equal to negative 20 plus 61 divided by 9.8. So, how much is that? So, 61 minus 20 divided by 9.8. That is 4.2 seconds. Then, your T2 is equal to negative 20 minus 61 divided by 9.8. So, how much is that? So, that is negative 8. 0.27 seconds. So, we can reject this solution okay, since walang negative na time. So, the answer is 4.2 seconds. So, the total time it takes is 4.2 seconds. Okay? So, next, how far from the foot of the building will it take, will strike? So, meaning kukulin natin yung x coordinate at this final position. Okay, so how to do that? So, since the total time it takes is 4.2 seconds, so what you're going to do is you just have to use this equation. Then, use the time t uh, na nakuha, uh, yung nakuha mo sa letter A. So, yung v sub not x mo is equal to 34.64. So, 34.64, they multiply with 4.2. How much is that? So, 69.3 meters. So, therefore, yung coordinates mo here is 69.3 at saka negative 170. Okay? So, next, what angle with the horizontal will it strike? So, kunin natin yung theta here. But first, we have to find first the velocity at this point. So, what is the velocity at that point? So, remember, the velocity at that point is still equal to the initial velocity, equal to 34.64 meters per second. Kasi yung along x ng projectile motion mo is in constant velocity. But yung vy mo is we can actually use this equation to find vy. So, meron ka ng v sub not y which is 20 meters per second. Meron ka ng g. 9.8 at yung total time mo it takes para yung object mo is uh, mapunta dito is equal to again 4.2 seconds so how much is that so 20 minus 9.8 multiplied with 4.2 that is negative 21.2 meters per second so negative means na yung object mo yung velocity y component is pointing downwards. So, as you can see sa ato ang expression here. I mean, sa ato ang uh, figure here. So, then, we have to find the magnitude of the velocity. Oh, no. So, the magnitude is not uh, in the kuan man. Ingo mo siyang angle daman. So, to find the angle, we just have to get theta as the inverse tangent of y component divided by the x component. So, how much is that? So, we have the inverse tangent. So, we'll just get the inverse tangent. So, you can also get the inverse tangent in your calculator if you have one in your side. <clears throat> so that is equal to negative 31 degrees, 0.5 degrees. Negative 31.5 degrees. You can actually, since nandun siya sa quadrant 4, so you can actually uh, get the standard form or you can actually... Uh, get 31.5 degrees. So, yung standard form kasi is we have to uh, add this one to 360. So, it's either negative 31 or 
328.5 degrees. So they are both correct. So we just have to state or 31.5 degrees below x-axis or below horizontal. So these are all correct lang. Okay? So I think that's all about projectile motion. Okay, so the next, uh, another type of motion is actually the uniform circular motion. So, ang uniform circular motion mo is again, uh, if a particle is moving in a circle with constant speed, is actually called a uniform circular motion. So, assuming that your circle is a constant, uh, is a perfect circle, meaning that yung radius mo at any point from the center of a circle is equal is equal meaning so example of that is of course a car rounding a curve as you can see in the figure and a satellite or uh, a satellite nga ng orbit sa tuang earth or any planet so that is still a uniform circular motion so a very common example for uniform circular motion in mechanics is actually a car rounding a curve so as you can see here's atom three figures so we have here the first car <clears throat> the second car and the third car <clears throat> what are the difference of this three figure so the first figure kasi is actually uh yung object mo is uh <clears throat> is speeding up so meaning that there is a change of velocity na greater than pa sa yung velocity at time at initial time t okay again yung acceleration mo has two components is we have here the tangential at saka yung perpendicular or the radial acceleration so meaning that if your acceleration vector is pointing away from the uh pointing is it away yeah pointing away or ito yung direction ng acceleration mo, then therefore, your object is uh, speeding up. And as you can see here, that the tangential acceleration is in the same direction as your velocity. Okay? So, yeah. So, the velocity, so therefore, it will change actually the uh, speed or the magnitude kasi yung tangential is in the same direction. Okay? <clears throat> so, that is why it is actually like making a curve because of the fact na meron pa siyang radial acceleration. So, kung wala siyang radial acceleration, what will happen is this car will just move in a straight line. Kasi tangential acceleration lang yung na naasaya ha. So, okay, since naman siya radial acceleration, which is always pointing towards the center of a circle, so ito yung center of the circle, pointing towards so that is why it is always moving on the same there uh, on the uh, circle okay <laughs> so if ever naman that your object is slowing down as you can see here that your uh, tangential acceleration is in opposite with the uh, velocity so meaning kung opposite siya sa ganito the object is slowing down and then again the acceleration and the tangential acceleration is in opposite direction as your velocity and then the radial acceleration is still pointing towards the towards the origin so yun yun lang yung uh, kaibahan ng <coughs> two so ito yung mga non-uniform circular motion kasi yung speed niya is constantly changing kasi okay because meron siyang tangential acceleration now take note of uh, at this point, I will just say to you na yung velocity vector mo in a, in a path of a particle is always tangent. Okay, so just like what I said sa ito ang <clears throat> velocity vector, di ba? Always tangent to the path of a particle, as you can see here. So now, the third case is where the acceleration is exactly perpendicular with the uh, velocity vector. So, meaning, kung perpendicular siya, your acceleration is just the radial acceleration or the perpendicular acceleration. Diba? So, meaning, wala siyang tangential acceleration. Hiwa siyang tangential. Wala siyang parallel nga <coughs> component ba? 
So, di ba, yung radial acceleration is always perpendicular with the velocity vector. So, what will happen if wala tangential acceleration, kung nara siya radial acceleration, or the uh, perpendicular component? So, this means, this acceleration perpendicular, or the radial acceleration, will not change the speed, but will change the direction of the uh, of the object, di ba? So, meaning, kanide siyang system is actually a uniform circular motion. Okay, because it is in constant speed, at saka yung radial acceleration mo is still constant, but the object is still moving in the direction. <clears throat> I mean, moving in, uh, constantly moving in, I mean, constantly changing direction. So, meaning, accelerate gap on an object because that is another way to change the acceleration of an object. Diba? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so, let's move on to here. So, assuming that we have a particle moving at constant speed, so meaning your V1 is equal to V2 in a circular path, a radius R, center at O, so, the particle moves from point P1 to P2 at delta T. Okay, kung saan tanaw na nato ato ang kuan, ato ang velocity vector change. So, we have here V1. So, can I say V1 dali? So, assuming ha, they are the same length kasi. Then, we have V2 here. So, assuming that they have the... Ah, okay. So, hindi siya the same length. Okay, so we have v1 tsaka we have v2 so the delta v is pointing in this direction okay so therefore delta v is equal to v2 minus v1 diba so since ang imuhang object moving from point p1 to p p2 okay magkuan siya ka ng mo kuan siya og distance mo travel siya og distance nga delta s or displacement delta s so since mo travel siya og distance sa delta s so from point p1 to p2 it will trace an angle which is equal to delta v as you can see here so kung tan-aw ni mo since v1 Since the vil the <clears throat> magnitude of your v one magnitude of your v one is equal to the magnitude of your v two, then therefore, kung mo move imo hang object at p one nga naay velocity v one padulong sa p two nga naay velocity v two at constant speed constant speed sila ha, so mo trace po niya o the the angle between v one and v two is still equal to Delta V. Diba? Same gap on same angle diri. Okay. Mo trace naman gap pun siya. same angle with the. When object is moving from P1 to P2. Diba? So therefore. Kung lantawan po na to ato ang. Uh, ato ang. Say P1. So this is your P1. Diba? So we have P1. Ito yung R. Tsaka ito yung R again. Ito yung. Uh, delta V. So, ito yung <clears throat> displacement delta S. So, makikita nyo na we can form a relationship like this. So, in trigonometry kasi these are uh, like a similar triangle. Kasi yung, yung V1 and V2 mo are equal. So, R and R still equal. So, we have an isosceles triangle which are similar which have the same angle delta V. So, therefore, we can form a relationship. So, meaning that yung delta v mo, the magnitude of your delta v is equal to the delta s and assuming that we have the side v1, the ratio of the sides is equal to the ratio of the side of the triangle because they are both isosceles and they are both the same angle delta v. Okay, so we can form this relationship from your theory of similar angles. 
then uh, we have here delta v is still equal to delta s divided by r then v1 then we know that the average acceleration okay so if we take the the uh, the magnitude of the average acceleration so we have here delta v divided by delta t so our aim here is to find the a magnitude of the acceleration okay the acceleration or the perpendicular component diba so mo automa nang naasa to ang asa tong uniform circular motion so we have here uh, your delta v is equal to this one so we have delta s divided by r then vi divided by delta t so rearranging so we have here v1 divided by r then we have delta s divided by delta t so to find the the uh, radial acceleration at say at point p1 lang or at point p toward any point at instant we just have to take the limit of both sides and that's actually the instantaneous acceleration is equal to v1 divided by r are constant so we can take that outside of the limit so limit as the change of your time interval is equal goes to zero delta s divided by delta t so we know that this one is actually equal to velocity diba? so we have v1 divided by r and this is velocity so since your v1 at this point is just usa na siya ka po a uh, instantaneous velocity na na siya so we can let your v1 as v so the acceleration is just equal to v square divided by r diba tingnan mo gani your v1 at this point naman is can be actually equal to v okay instantaneous acceleration naman siya at this point so we can take the uh, v here as your v1 okay and we can take your v1 as your v so the limit of your delta t goes to zero delta s divided by delta t is still equal to velocity so that's why v times v is equal to v squared divided by r so this is the radial acceleration so yes so this is actually the magnitude of the radial acceleration so here we have the radial acceleration given by this magnitude then in again in uniform circular motion the acceleration is always inward padulong siya sa circle okay and perpendicular to the velocity vectors as you can see here makita na to nga the radial acceleration at any point is always perpendicular with the velocity which is tangent to any point diba so ang radial acceleration is always pointing towards the center of the circle Okay, so na ayon siya yung magnitude nga v squared divided by r. Okay, again, this is actually constant. So, nga nung ganing na ay acceleration kay, sige siya change sa og direction. Dili kay, sige siya og change og velocity. Okay? So, yeah. So, this is actually a uniform motion, meaning a, a constant acceleration but we have the varying direction so the a rad here is actually also called other than radial acceleration other than perpendicular component of acceleration this is also called the centripetal acceleration so centripetal in physics means center seeking so meaning always is pointing towards the center the center seeking man siya. okay so Okay, since we are talking about a circle, so we can actually provide another like another expression for the radial acceleration or the centripetal acceleration equal to this one in terms of period t. So, ang period ni mo is actually the total at uh, the time it takes to complete one circle. Okay, so mo na iyang t. So here, kung tanaw na to ang imong velocity. So, velocity is actually equal to the distance divided by the time. Ang speed, di ba? So, distance divided by the time. So, the total distance na itake niya sa for the, horse, for the whole circle is actually the circumference lang, di ba? So, we have V, the speed is equal to distance divided by time. So, the di total distance na mo take niya sa whole at say 
at time at period T is just the circumference of the circle. Mamun na iyang total time, di ba? So, ay total distance nga mo complete in one circle. And the time it takes nga complete in one circle is just the period T. Okay? Which is in seconds. So, therefore, we can actually put this one here. So, the A rad, I mean, the centripetal acceleration is equal to 2 pi R over T. Then we have your square divided by R. Okay, so, ako siyang substitute ang V. There is a V squared. Then simplifying, we have 4 pi squared, then R divided by T squared. So, ito yung radial acceleration in terms of a period. Okay? So, yeah. So, ano yung... Ano yung difference ng uniform circular motion at saka ng projectile motion natin? So, sa centripetal acceleration kasi, always yung radial acceleration at saka yung velocity which is always tangent to the path of the circle is always perpendicular. And the radial acceleration is na siya magnitude ani but with varying direction. Okay, and it is always inward. Okay, mag-vary man yung direction. Now, for projectile, Iyang acceleration is always pointing downward, di ba? which is equal to negative g. And same lang gihapon siya na imuhang velocity is again tangent to any path of the projectile. But magperpendicular lang na imuhang acceleration at saka yung velocity mo at the peak of the trajectory ng projectile mo. Okay, so other than that, hindi na siya mag uh, perpendicular here dito. Okay, so that's it. That's the. Uh, that's actually the. Yeah, so that's the difference. Okay. So let's have ah okay so uh since nag talk nang talk about circular motion so how about we just have to talk about non-uniform circular motion so again na ay two acceleration components involved diba so in uniform acceleration si centripetal acceleration na ang naa or si radial acceleration but for a non-uniform circular motion na ana si tangential acceleration again kung non-uniform these are object moving in a circle na hindi constant ang yung speed. Okay, because din na lang di mag-constant yung speed, kay tungod ni tangential acceleration. Okay? So, just like what we did sa yung roller coaster, di ba? So, muhinay siya, muhinay, hantud sa mo, kusog na po rin siya, di ba? So, this is actually the uh, the uh, example of the uh, kanang non-uniform circular motion. So, how can we describe the motion of an object moving in a non-uniform circular motion. So again, we still have a perfect circle with the origin here. Again. So, what you're going to do is, in object is mag-move pa ana. So what will happen is, the the object at this side is na siya acceleration na pin ani, di ba? So because of the fact na imuhang uh, velocity changes with time. Okay? So, maging slow na siya, mag-slow down na imuhang, hunat na imuhang uh, roller coaster, and then, mo speed up na po dayon, and then, bayag na po siya hunat, then speed up. Okay? So, because of the fact that you're at this point kasi, yung tangential acceleration mo is always parallel to the uh, velocity vector. So, this uh, this means nga, since nag-oppose yung acceleration mo dun sa a velocity vector mo so this means nga magsuslow down siya so just like what we said and then the radial acceleration mo is still pointing to the uh, to the uh, origin kasi center seeking siya di ba so at the maximum at the minimum point ng uh, and i mean the maximum point ng circle mo at here at point here yung yung tangential at point here mo is zero pero yung radial acceleration mo is minimum. Okay? 
So, what for the fact na yung tangential mode here is 0, kus manghunat naman siya pa dung dali. So, until eventually it will become 0 until mo baik ni siya o gzzzzana, di ba? So, mula siya o kanang roller coaster nga, ah, hunat sa po, di di, di, mo baik na po din ko o kuan. Okay, so meaning that at this point of the motion sa ito ang uh, object, this is the uh, the object speeds up because ngano gani because the tangential acceleration is in the same direction as your uh, velocity as you can see here so this chunk tangential will change the magnitude of the speed okay, as you can see here kanini dako dako siya diba at this point so until a point na pud nga here the radial nimo is maximum but the tangential is zero so at that specific point the uh, the uh, that that specific point the uh, velocity does not change anymore uh, does not change anymore pero ang iyang radial acceleration is maximum so meaning because of that ang imong object must uh, ma force siya na mo mo follow a path because of the radial acceleration so mo na mo follow na po siya circle until at this point na na po yung gawas ng tangential acceleration till mo hinay mo hinay yung velocity so that is how we we describe the motion of the uh, of a non-uniform circular motion okay so mag mag perpendicular lang ang imuhang acceleration tsaka yung velocity vector mo at the highest point at tsaka lowest point ng uh, the roller coaster mo or the circle diba okay so tandaan nyo lang that if the tangential acceleration opposes the velocity vector that means it's slowing down but if mag mag same sila ng direction meaning it is speeding up okay so yun 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 lang yung um, parang ano natin yun lang yung parang uh, kanang ato ang basihan Okay, that at saka maximum at saka minimum, yung tangential acceleration mo is zero. Okay, so yung tangential. So yung tangential acceleration mo is zero at that point because of the fact na it has something to do with like conservation of energy so uh, it is very hard to to explain this one without using uh, the concept of energy okay so I will just uh, we just have to stick with the motion of the particle moving in uh, moving in circles so you can see here in a non-uniform motion okay so I think that's the so let's answer this one so passengers on a carnival ride move at constant speed in a horizontal circle of radius 5 meters making a complete circle in 4 seconds so what is their acceleration so yung period mo is 4 seconds because that is the uh, time to complete a circle tsaka yung radius mo is 5 meters so other you so you have to use this equation other than yung isa Okay, so 4 pi squared over t squared. So then you just have to, to substitute all the values. So we have 4. Tapos meron tayong pi squared. Tapos multiply with times 5. Divided by 4 squared. So which is equal to 12. 12. So we have 12.34 meters per second squared. So you can just check. If sakto ba yung process ko on how to calculate the uh, radial acceleration. So, yung acceleration na tinutukoy nyo dito is radial ha. Or centripetal kasi constant speed yung ano niya. Yung uh, constant kasi yung speed niya. Okay? Kung hindi constant, so meaning meron siyang tangential acceleration. Okay? So, next is actually the next problem is a Ferris wheel with radius 14 meters is turning about a horizontal axis through its center the linear speed of a passenger on the rim is constant and equal to 
7 meters per second. So what are the magnitude and direction of the passenger's acceleration as she passes through the lowest point in her circular motion? So always remember that uh, you have to take note that yung linear speed niya is constant and equal to 7 meters per second. So, kung, kung constant yung speed niya, meaning at any point on the, on the, at any point of the girl, kung saan siya pupunta, yung acceleration niya is still constant, iba kasi speed, yung speed niya is constant. So, we have speed equal to 7 meters per second. Meron siyang radius na 14 meters. So, I will just put here, saan yung, ano, uh, ah, wait. So I would just so I would just put the answer here so because my laptop is lagging na kayo. Okay? So you can just check if this is correct for problem number 1. So here, yeah, so we have to find the magnitude and direction as it passes to the lowest. Ito yung lowest point niya. So ano yung direction at saka magnitude ng acceleration. So the magnitude we can just I uh, use this one. So we have 7 square divided by 14 so how much is that so that is that is 3.5 meters per second squared and the direction at that lowest point is remember ito yung speed nya kung ito yung speed nya so the direction is pointing inwards sa yung towards the center of the circle so you can just say towards the center of the wheel. Okay, so we can just say that. Okay, kung if we talk about direction. Okay, how about the highest point? So at highest point, if ito yung an direction nya. Okay, so always remember ha. So the velocity vector is always perpendicular with the. Uh, with the acceleration kasi ano gani the speed is constant so at highest point this is the highest point so the acceleration is still equal to 3.5 meters per second but the of course the the mm, the still the uh, the direction of the acceleration is towards the center of the circle. So, same lang gihapon, okay? Towards the center. Or you can just say upward, kung para makaingunta na nag-change yung siya of direction, okay? Because uh, nag-change ba yung acceleration, okay? And then, the highest point is downward. Okay, yung acceleration niya. Okay, how about how much does it take the Ferris wheel to make one revolution? So, you can just use this equation kasi meron naman tayong a revolution. Or, you can directly use the speed 2 pi r divided by t. So, anywhere, uh, uh, any of this formula, you can actually get so suppose I will use this one so t is just equal to 2 pi r divided by v so what is r 14 so we have 14 meters divided by the speed is 7 meters per second so how much is that so that is actually equal to okay so divided by 7 so that is 12.6 so the the ferris wheel will take a complete revolution in 12.6 seconds okay yeah so the last problem that we will have today is about the tangential acceleration chakra radial acceleration okay so this is a example of a non-uniform circular motion 
kasi meron siyang tangential at saka meron siyang mm, radial. So as you can see here, meron siyang 30 degrees na angle so we can uh, atong ma-decompose atong A into the radial at saka tangential. So tangential is here at saka radial is pointing again in that direction. So tangential is here. Okay, so is it that direction? Kasi kung titignan natin yung ito, so yes, I think that is the uh, direction na doon yung tangential natin. Kasi clockwise, counterclockwise kasi nasa, nasa figure natin. So we have here, we have to find the radial acceleration. So yung radial, I mean this is radial. Okay, the radial acceleration lang is equal to uh, V squared divided by R. So, wala naman tayong V squared divided by R. But as you can see here, using the, <clears throat> using the, <clears throat> uh, using the, kanang trigonometric function, so we can find A rad as equal to the A, the magnitude of the acceleration at that point, times the, what is the radial here? Actually, the cosine of 30 degrees. So we have 15, then cosine of 30 degrees. So what is the radial acceleration at that point? So we have 15. That is equal to 13 meters per second squared. How about yung tangential acceleration mo? So still we have A. Tapos meron tayong sine 30 degrees. Kasi ito yung opposite. Ito yung side na opposite is the tangential. <coughs> we have 15. That is actually equal to 7.5 meters per second squared. So how about the speed of the particle? So we can just use this one kasi meron naman tayong radius at saka uh, radial acceleration. So using this equation, so we have V squared divided by R. Then the V is actually equal to A rad multiplied with R. Taking the square root, so we have V is equal to A rad is equal to 13 meters per second squared multiply with the R which is 2.5 and taking the square root, so we have, we have, how much is that? So you can actually calculate this on your calculator, okay? So we have 5.7 meters per second. Okay, so next... This is the velocity. How about that tangential? So we have the tangential acceleration equal to that. Okay, so I think we're done here. So next topic is all about Newton's law of motion. Okay, so see ya.